G'day and welcome to This International Student Life, produced by Wise Words Media. And we really appreciate you taking time out of your busy studies as you prepare. You might be a prospective international student based overseas. You might be a parent of an international student. You might be involved in the industry, uh, in the recruitment as a recruitment agent overseas, uh, recruiting students, uh, attending uh, 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 fairs or open days at international campuses for Australian universities. Welcome and welcome to this special episode, this, uh, this uh, um, exclusive episode, looking to share information about uh, some um, stats and statistics that we've researched in the international student space. It'll be a short 30 second break. Don't go away, we'll be right back. G'day and welcome back to this special series. Just taking a little bit of a look uh, at some information coming out over the last few weeks in the international student uh, sector about the country of origin for international students. And as we've uh, found out from our research that India has overtaken China as the top country of origin for international students coming back to Melbourne since Australia's borders have opened back to uh, people that can come now uh, to to Australia and Melbourne from overseas. And uh, this will be uh, a broken down episode. We don't want to go on for too long. India has leapfrogged China as the number one country of origin for foreign students in Victoria. And university and student accommodation providers are reporting a better than expected return of international students arriving back or returning to study in Melbourne. And it turns out that students from India make up a quarter of the 96,300 international student visa holders currently in Victoria. And this is as of uh, this is as of March, around about the middle of March 2022, this information uh, came out according to our sources. And uh, so um, it's uh, those from China are 19%. So uh, Indians, 20, about 25% a quarter. China, 19%. And would you believe uh, students from Nepal uh, also noted around about uh, 7%. Now, in March 2020, prior to the coronavirus pandemic, Chinese students accounted for just over 25% of the state of Victoria, the population of international students here, and India was the second largest contributor, just marginally behind at 24%. Now, it turns out that uh, Victoria's international student cohort rose, as we said, to 96,300 in March 2022, but it had dropped from a peak of 151,500 students before the pandemic, and it went as low as 68,400 at the end of 2021. Now, uh, Professionals in the international student education sector based in Australia believe that the stunted return of Chinese students, that is the drop in Chinese students returning, there's a combination of factors. And top of that list is geopolitical tensions, which we won't go into here um, uh, because we're not providing a, a commentary or an insight onto those things, but we will note it as a reason that's been cited. Also, the tough, Australia has extremely tough and restrictive uh, COVID-19 and travel restrictions. And it turns out also the flexibility of online study is also a factor in being attractive to staying at home in your own country. Now, uh, four weeks into most university uh, semesters, and there's 10 universities based in Victoria, uh, nine of them in Melbourne, are headquartered in Melbourne. Now, the city of Melbourne says that about 4,000 international students are still arriving each week as some students report delays in having their visa approved, which is uh, no surprise, really. Now, we do have a graphic uh, from the Department of Home Affairs, which uh, we'll try and insert into this video. And, uh, and it actually compares um, uh, uh, student numbers. It's very uh, interesting graphics uh, from uh, March 2020 to March 2022. We'll try and fit that in. Now, um, 
The president of the Education Consultants of, uh, Association of Australia is Gary Lee, and he leads the, uh, the AIDE Education and Migration, and they specialise in linking Chinese students to Australia. Now, he commented that Chinese students starting higher education studies, they were actually um, starting to show a preference for the United Kingdom because uh, its border opened earlier. And, uh, and I can confirm this, Wise Words Media actually uh, saw reports about this throughout 2020 and 2021. So uh, that's a fairly common uh, um, uh, reflection on how things have been going. And uh, the, he's also, Mr Lee said the, down, the downturn was also in part due to the tense relationship between Australia and China. There's uh, trade tariffs uh, ongoing, which is totally outside um, the international student education space. And more recently, uh, Australia's been criticising Beijing's res uh, response to Russia's war in Ukraine. Now, he's, uh, Mr Lee's also noted that uh, some return flights from China cost over $10,000 at this uh, time in uh, March, this, this particular uh, uh, report was made. And uh, uh, in his opinion, he thinks that the number of students will grow uh, returning from China once China opens its borders and flights return to normal. And you've got to take into account, as we know, the last couple of, day, couple of days, the Chinese government has uh, slapped strict lockdowns back on 26 million people uh, around the Shanghai area. Uh, very strict, uh, as they've had a little, uh, some outbreaks, uh, close contact outbreaks of uh, the Omicron virus, virus, haven't they? And uh, there's an, uh, another factor which is very interesting. The, the Chinese government recently changed its regulations that they're recognising online study degrees. And as long as that remains, that, that's, uh, that's a big factor in uh, tempting these kids uh, to stay at home in China and study online. And uh, we'll finish off today's episode uh, noting that as many as 57% of Chinese student visa holders remained outside Australia as of March 14, 2022. And that compares with just 9% of Indian students. And that's uh, with um, uh, sourcing that from data uh, produced by the Department of Home Affairs. So we'll finish off this episode here. Uh, thanks for listening in to this International Student Life. got any feedback for us, uh, drop a comment uh, below. Uh, we really appreciate a like and especially a subscription. That's the best way to keep track of uh, new episodes on our platform. And if you can share this episode or any of our episodes on your social media channels, uh, share it about with your friends or anyone in the international student education space, that'd be much appreciated. Thanks for watching and the footage coming from Open Days in Melbourne uh, in February and March 2022. We'll chat to you next time. This International Student Life is produced by Wise Words Media and Columbia Films. Information in this episode is sourced from information available in the public domain. Wise Words Media does not take any responsibility for any errors or omissions of information contained in this episode.